uh, these are all the, this is what I do in retirement. I, uh, I got hooked on different things. Started with fire towers, so I did Catskills and the Adirondacks. There were 57 towers. I interviewed the forest rangers and the observers up in towers. You still, I, th I don't think you staff your towers, but New Hampshire, Paula, you do have uh, fire towers that they staff. And I think that's about the only, and Massachusetts. Uh, but this is where I live, a little town called Delhi, uh, near Oneonta, Cooperstown is up here. And I did uh, a book on the fire towers of the Catskills. This is the farmhouse that we had. Uh, and it was 1974, we were just married two years. And uh, it was, we had a junior college in town, Delhi Tech, and uh, it was a fraternity house and then abandoned for two years, a hundred or more windows smashed, mm -hmm. just a mess. And so we got 10 acres of land. The Delaware River was across the street <coughs> and uh, a ni beautiful, nice uh, cow barn silo. I built a little cabin there and we raised our three kids, 27,500. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that was in 74, but it was neat. And when I came from New Jersey for an interview up here in Delhi, I saw this school on the mountain. I thought, oh, my God, if I could only teach in that school. And this was built by the WPA. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? Works Progress, Progress. Works Progress Administration. That was started in 35. Now the CCC's was in 33, two years earlier. And that was older men, okay? And they did not stay in camps. They would just work on projects in towns. And look at the schools, mm -hmm. town halls. I remember in Pennsylvania, uh, where I live, uh, sewer work, road work, you know. And his idea was people in these days, they didn't want free money. They wanted to work. And uh, then a boy came up to me and said, Mr. Podscott, you know, this book, My Side of the Mountain, by Gene George, is all about Delhi. I said, you're crazy. It's just a farm town and a college town, a little college town. And he opened it up, and there it was a poor boy, or I shouldn't say a mm -hmm. poor boy, a boy left New York City, came to uh, Delhi searching for his grandpa Gribley's farm, and he goes to the Cannon Free Library. That was our library. Mm -hmm. And he learned how, where possibly the was, and he lived in a hollowed-out tree, and he tamed a hawk. This is all fictional, mm -hmm. all fictional. And uh, <coughs> he survived the fall, winter, and spring. So I looked, our librarian said, you know, if we could only have an author come to our school, but it was so expensive. You know, you go to conferences, boy, you'd have all these fancy writers, and then you'd go buy their books, and they'd sign them. So uh, I looked in the back of the book and said, she was from Chappaqua, New York. I had no idea where Chappaqua was. And ladies, where is it? Westchester County. Mm -hmm. Westchester <laughs> County. So where the Clintons live today. So I dialed 555-1212, got information, you know, for uh, Westchester. And I got her phone number, Jean George. So one night, I had the courage to dial the number, and a lady answered. And I said, is Jean George there? She said, speaking. I'm just a teacher from Delhi. Oh, Delhi, what a wonderful town. I said, we're poor. We can't afford an author. Could you come and please talk and be our first author? She said, I'd love to come. So here I had a Newbery Award winner. She also won it for uh, Julie of the Wolves. She wrote over 100 nature books before she d passed away. And she drove up, you know, two and a half, three hours and stayed, talked to the kids. And I told 15 other writers that Jean George was coming. So I had 16 authors, K through 12, and I did this for 25 years. Mm. I was immersed in writers. Mm. I, it was just unbelievable. Did you ever hear this guy? Eric Carle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where the Watson Show? Is that right? No. 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 
the hungry caterpillar. So he came, stayed over at my house. I made him French toast, I think, in maple syrup, you know. And my daughter, Christy, sat on his lap, and he read the hungry caterpillar. This is just, I had, did you ever hear of Howard Koch? Do you like movies at all? What did he write? Casablanca. He was 87 years old, and just picture him in our library with all the high school kids in there, and he said, I was blackballed by McCarthy during the 1950s. He said, I couldn't get a job. I had to go to England to write under a pen name. If you kids believe in something and the whole world's against you, stand up for what you think is right. Can you believe that? Haywood Hale Brune from CBS. I don't know if you've ever seen him on TV. This uh, older gentleman. I had Ann Martin, the babysitter books. Uh, I had just so many. I, I was just thinking about this. I saw a picture of uh, Tom uh, Rockwell. I had Thomas. I had his son, Thomas Rockwell, who wrote How to Eat Fried Worms. Did you ever hear of that book, yeah. children's book? Yeah. And he came to our school. He never mentioned his father. They were on, I think they were on the outs. But I also, my whole writing career started on Hunter Mountain, visited a fire tower, and there was a, an old guy came out, and there was snow on the ground, and he said, guys, come in here, warm up. So we went in, had sat by this nice uh, wood fire, got a drink of water. He said, it's the greatest job in the world, meeting thousands of people. Uh, uh, and so I told a publisher, somebody should write books about this. That was in 87. 97, he called, uh, the publisher called me. He said, Marty, they're trying to save the tower. How would you like to write a book? I think, oh my God, to be an author and to have a book in a library and a bookstore. So I did, it took me three years, but I got it done. And I did the, about 15 towers on this area. Then I went up to the six million acre Adirondacks. I know it rivals with you people here in Vermont and New Hampshire, right? Uh, which is better, the Adirondacks, Vermont, or the White Mountains? They're all beautiful, right? So I traveled around there and I got six books done. First, the fire towers. Then uh, this um, uh, comic book illustrator, Sam Glansman, he came to my school twice, stayed over at my house, and he said, let's do something together. So every week we did a panel like this, sort of like, almost like believe it or not. <coughs> and I would write a little caption and send him a bunch of pictures, and every week he would come up with just a different layout like this. So we did 251 things like this. So I'll pass it around. <coughs> and it was neat to be able to, and the, just unbelievable, you know. I had so many people around me. I went to parochial school and we never had books. We didn't even have a library in our, our town. So I never was really interested in reading until I was about 21 and somebody gave me the pearl by Steinbeck, and then I started reading because there were nice, exciting stories, and they're short. <coughs> so then I, somebody had these pictures about CCC guys working in the Adirondacks. So I went from the men and women, forest rangers who protected the Catskills and Adirondack Mountains, to the men who built up our forest, and I, this is my passion now. I will probably die writing a book of something about the CCCs. In fact, I've gotten to know, there used to be in the 80s and 90s, even in Vermont, you had a group, NACA. They would meet in Barrie, the boys that used to be in the CCC, and then they gradually died out, of course. Uh, I have one guy now, 100 years old, uh, in Rome, New York. That's the last guy that I know of, but there's probably other guys. And he was in an all-black camp and because in Pennsylvania, New York, and all the southern states, you had white camps, black camps. And in New England, they were integrated. So we had blacks and whites in the camps here. So this book, I finally, I, I interviewed about 100 guys. 
and it's documented in this. We'll start it this way. And then I came to Connecticut because I always go with the wife. <laughs> you know, her family was her cousins and uh, parents were, and she was originally, her dad's first farm was around Middletown, Middlefield, Connecticut. So I started traveling and I interviewed a hundred CCC boys from Connecticut. They're still alive. You know, if I would have started this 20 years ago, God, I would have had tons of them. <clears throat> So these, this is where the camps were in Connecticut, mostly along uh, near the Westchester, uh, I forget what's the name of that county there in uh, New York, but mostly in the mountains. Uh, let's see, the uh, Camp Cross, Macedonia Brook, it's Kent. Anybody ever go to Kent, Connecticut? I think you're right. Yes. Right on the Appalachian Trail, but it's not really the highest peak. The highest peak is the yeah, I, that's true. They did that. I know when I'd be going on 84, you could see the tower up there. Uh, now, this is what the statue looks like. Okay. We didn't have, there were five, 10 states that didn't have it. Vermont was one, Rhode Island, and Connecticut was one of the th three. Pennsylvania has five of these statues because Pennsylvania is huge. If you ever tried driving across it, it takes you five hours just to drive across Pennsylvania. So there were tons of uh, uh, parks that were built by the CCCs. Okay, here's the guy. He just passed away December 104. And he worked in Massachusetts CCC. And this guy was 99 when he passed away. Uh, just this... Uh, past winter also. Uh, then I went to a guy from Rhode, uh, Connecticut. He said, I can't find my father. He was in Rhode Island, and all he had was this burnt out picture from the house when it burned down. So I tracked it down with the historian for Rhode Island, and I came up, got the Rhode Island book done. But I didn't grow up in the Depression. I was born in 43, but my parents had especially my mother's side, from the family from Lithuania, there were eight girls and one boy. And my mother was eight years old when my grandfather died, black lung. You know, these, and why these people want to start the coal mining again? Oh, can you imagine sending these men, sometimes some even women, go down there, breathing all that dust, and, and then burning it, and then you get the pollution. But 25% of the people were unemployed. Uh, when Roosevelt was elected, he beat Hoover. He promised uh, to start a civilian conservation corps. He was like his a cousin, Teddy Roosevelt, loved conservation. He set aside so much, how many acres, thousands of acres around the United States as national uh, parks. When he uh, went to Congress, his, one of the laws was the Emergency Conservation Work Act. You probably don't hear about this. All you hear is CCC. That's what it was. He went to Congress on March 27th with the, that law or proposal, and four days later, it passed the House and the Senate, just like our House and Senate work today. And he said he wanted 250,000 young boys, 18 to 25, and unemployed and out of school because most, a lot of boys quit school at eighth grade. Can you imagine that? Do you ever have any 13-year-old, 14-year-old boys in your family? Can you imagine them just quitting school and trying to help their parents? That's what it was during the Depression. So. He wanted 250,000 boys <clears throat> ready by July 1st. Who could be able to give these boys food, clothing, shelter, and medical care in three months? Who didn't read that chapter last night? <laughs> the Army. Good. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Uh, but before we get to that one, I got to tell you about this guy. 
He was a poor farm boy in Westport on Lake Champlain in New York. He raised up money with his dad and he went to Syracuse School of Forestry. He came across the lake and he started out as a forester and then he wound up the head forester. Okay? And he wrote two books, if I could find the other one. This is his life. I don't know if anybody read, read these by Perry Merrill. He's very famous. How many have heard of him? Very famous. So he was the when, I even have a note in there, someplace. I have another one. Now, the story is, oh, he, here's the other one he wrote. He wrote this one, too, the history of the CCCs in the whole United States, Perry Merrill. <clears throat> Start that with Mike. Mike. Okay. So he, in, I think it was in the 1920s, he went on one of these trips to Europe just to see because the Europeans were the foremost in forestry. That's how we got all our ideas. Yale School of Forestry, you know, they brought uh, the Germans over to teach. So he went over to Sweden. He saw these people skiing. Holy crow. Can you imagine if we could get skiing here in Vermont, you know, during the winter time? This would bring a lot of jobs. So when the CCC started, the first three trails in Stowe were all built by the CCCs. Okay? <coughs> 33 to 34 winter. Ski, I forgot what the name of the trail was. Then 35 to 36. 36 to 37. Were the first three trails. Bromley, too. Uh, one or two of the trails were first done there. <clears throat> but he was the one when it passed the Emergency Conservation Work Act, he went to Washington and he had plans what to do with the state forest and also the problem that they had with the Winooski River. What happened to the Winooski River? In 19... Very good. 1927. These rivers that flowed into the Winooski brought so much water, it flooded the Winooski all the way down, you know, to Lake Champlain. So he had the plans that the electric companies had driven, uh, drawn up, how they could make some money making electricity, but also to prevent flooding, okay? Three dams. So he has all these plans. He goes to Washington, and guess what? They approve him. Because normally, the camps were all allotted by population. I had to su suck me in. Okay, so he get, went and they approved of it, even though Vermont had such a low population. Now, he's got all these projects. Where are we going to get the, other, the boys to work? There weren't enough 18 to 20. Guess where most of the kids came from? New York. Who said that? Massachusetts. Most of the boys, if you look at the uh, population, let's see, I'm going to pass this around. I got this from a lady whose, this was her father's CCC. This, 1937, I don't know where they got the money, but every state had a, a yearbook. And it has the camps. This is the new, uh, or... Vermont and New Hampshire. And you'll be, be able to see all the different camps in these two. And in 1937, the names of the boys at each camp. So the Pennsylvania one would be gigantic. Um, uh, I've got the one for New York, too. Okay. But it had such reverence. If you ever go to a park that was built, like you're a Scutney one, you'll probably see a sign. This was built by the CCC. And do you see my flag over there on the wall? This is the 90th anniversary 
of the CCC. Very special, okay? So a lot of states don't do this. They don't show, you know, who, who did this. But he had, this guy here, Perry Merrill, had such a tremendous effect to building up your state. So the Department of Labor would choose the boys that were poor families. What families? So if you, they called it relief. Did you ever hear of that term? The families were on relief. They got some assistance from the government. Nothing like we have today where people get unemployment checks, etc. Now, who was the lady, the first lady in the cabinet that was the head of the Department of Labor? Who said that? Oh my God, two. Very good, Catherine. How do you know all this stuff? Genius. You must be the historical, hysterical society? Yeah. I see them laughing a lot. Okay. Oh, God, I don't have her name here. But the army was chosen. Okay. Another problem Roosevelt had, in, when Hoover was president, they had veterans of World War I come to the uh, Washington uh, Bonus Army, 1932, and they said, please give us our bonus. We can't wait till 1946 to get our bonus. We needed it now in 32. We don't have any work. And what did Hoover do? <laughs> Threw him out. Who was the general that was sent? General MacArthur. He drove them out, shot some, burned their uh, thing. They even had, the veterans had their families in these tents and things protesting. So when the new president, Roosevelt, came in 33, they came again. Please, President Roosevelt and Congress, give us our bonus. Who did Roosevelt send? Starts with an E. <clears throat> what? No. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Eleanor. She drove up in her limousine. What's the problem? You don't have a job. Now, if you're the president of the United States, you have protesters. I don't know if you've ever seen a, pro a president that had protesters much. But if you're a politician, do you want to have protesters? No. So he said, I'm going to give him a job. So we have veterans camps here all over the United States <clears throat> like this. Now in your, uh, let's see, up in Grafton. Anybody ever go to Grafton State Park? Mm -hmm. That camp, believe it or not, the Rick Ricker camp had all boys from Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Rhode Island, because they didn't have enough boys here to do the work, okay? So Rhode Island, but most of the boys came from Massachusetts. And I'm going to be speaking in Barry uh, on Wednesday. But I don't know if you could see this. These guys are just using picks and shovels and wheelbarrows, basically. How many have ever seen that big dam in East Barry? It's earth and dam, OK? Uh, <clears throat> well, that's the, that's the way it was built by these veterans. Now, just picture. Getting off the train, guess how many came to, Con uh, to Connecticut? Vermont. 5,000 World War I veterans. And they were working on the East Barry Dam, the Wrightsville Dam, and then in 35, 36, the Waterbury Dam. Anybody ever see any of these dams? Which one? Isn't it unbelievable? Gigantic. All earth and dam. And who knows what did they put in the middle of the earth and dams so that the water doesn't go through? Clay. But they have monitors too. Even though with clay, you know, it's very tough for water, it gradually seeps through. So I have to watch these earthen dams. <clears throat> okay. These boys were, look at how skinny they were. They were lucky uh, just, uh, you know, to have one meal a day. 
Where did they get all the clothes for these boys? Army surplus, World War I. Here are the boys, either coming or going from the Marshfield camp. They're in, I got it, Groton. Okay, I think I might even be speaking up there. But what a place. If you haven't been to Groton State Park, it is huge and just fantastic. The boys were given now clothes. They didn't have holes in the shoes. They had regular boots, wool. And look at I've got. <clears throat> I got, I, I can't even remember where I got this. Uh, CCC, when Roosevelt in the 35 and 36 saw the boys marching with their World War I surplus, he said, we got to do something better. So we got this. So we'll pass this. We'll start in the cheap seats. <laughs> but look at the way it was made, too. Nice wool. And I've got a nice hat from the Adirondacks up in Malone. So if they had a parade or on Friday night, a lot of these boys, too, would get a pass. And they would hitchhike. You know, if they weren't too far from home or too far from their girlfriend, then they would hitchhike put their uniforms on, and they would give, get rides. Or they would have dances, and they would cart the boys, the, or the girls, I should say. They would put signs up in uh, Windsor, dance at the CCC camp, and they would pick up the girls. And sometimes on Saturday night, they would come into town on their uh, night out. They would drop them off. So they'd have their uniforms on, and the girls from Windsor, wow, look at those handsome guys, you know, and some of the boys, you know, from Massachusetts, Boston, you know. So uh, they wound up marrying them. And when I was in Bellows Falls at the library, this guy, Marty, uh, M Marty McDonald, uh, he said, if it wasn't for the CCC, I wouldn't be here. Because his father came up from Massachusetts, and he was working at the camp, met his wife, met a future wife at a dance, and they got married, and they just went off for two years. The whole family didn't even know where they left. But he said they finally came back, and he settled in Bellows Falls. So it probably happened here in Windsor, too. Uh, okay. Oh, I got to show you this, too. I got this from a lady in Bolton Landing. Her dad's blanket, army blanket from, and see, they probably had his name tag here when they were uh, to identify their clothes. We'll start it with our girl from all the way from Hawaii. She flew in just for my talk. <laughs> Did you know that she's from Hawaii? We've got, we've got Paris, Hawaii. Okay, now they were in barracks. Now, we're going to see who's the smartest here, Barbara. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any CPAs here? No CPAs? Oh, you're the businessman at Dartmouth. Okay. <laughs> now, most of the camps had 200 boys, 18 to 25. They were paid a dollar a day. How much did they get paid a month? $30. Who said that? Pennsylvania girl. What a genius. Now, 25 went straight home to the parents. They had $5 spending money. $5. Now, we have 200 boys. We have only four barracks in each camp here in Vermont. If we have four barracks, 200 boys, how would the Army divide how many boys would go in barracks one? I think I heard the answer. Who said that? Uh, Who? Amy? No, no, Brandon. Ten others. Fifty in each barracks. Fifty in each barracks, okay? So can you imagine having fifty boys, hormones flying, eighteen to twenty five? How many were teachers? No teacher? Art teacher? What grade level? I, I am a, I work in preschool. Oh, preschool. Wow. Well, you've got college, too. You see college kids, right? So 18 to 25. So 
the Army said, we only have a, a captain and uh, a lieutenant. How are we going to watch these 50 boys? So what they did is, who has the uniform? The, see the stripes on there? Now, let's see. Now, what's your name over here? Dave. Dave. You were going to put you in barracks number one. Okay? You're going to be the leader, and you're going to shape them up. Now, Dave, you're going to not get $30. You're going to get 45 a month. You like that? Great. Okay. And what's your name? Walter. Walter. You be his assistant. You get $36. So it's leader and assistant leader. And you kept those 38 guys in line, wake them up at 6 o'clock in the morning, get them rolling, and that place had to be spick and span. Anybody up in the Army or Navy? So you know what had to be done. So there they'd have the three stoves. Look at everything. Neat. Just like our children and grandkids' bedrooms. Did you two make your beds today? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I have two little uh, granddaughters now, 16 and 18, when they'd come over Friday. <clears throat> I said, if you want your CCC money, you got to make your bed so they'd get a dollar a day. You know, so they made their beds. Uh, then they had a doctor from World War I, okay, in the reserves. And he would be at the, the camp. He didn't live at the camp sometimes. Maybe he would rent a house someplace. <clears throat> and he had an assistant. And they took care of a major, any medical problems. Now, if they had appendicitis, what would be the nearest army hospital they would take them to in Vermont? Deep River? White River? I don't think that was... Getting close. Burlington? What's the army base there? Fort Ethan Allen. Fort Ethan Allen. So they would take them up to Fort Ethan Allen. Uh, and they each had like an ambulance too. Now look at this camp. How many know where Bellows Falls? Okay. Now, this one, I had a hard time trying to figure out where it was. They called it the Bellows Falls camp, but it wasn't in Bellows Falls. It was in Westminster. Where the interstate comes off. Nice place to stop for coffee, pizza, gas. That's where I like to stop there. <laughs> but to the left of that place, you, there's a dirt road goes up a hill, and up there is CCC Road, and there is where the camp was. Where the state police is? No, it's a dirt road. No, you go up that dirt road up the hill. There's a pond, there's water there, and you go up the hill, and it's a winding road. It parallels Route 91. And you could see where the camp was as I was driving up today. Between the trees, ah, there's the houses that I live there. And a lady and her uh, mother-in-law, they have two houses on the CCC camp. They bought the land where the camp was. And they were so happy to see this picture that if you ever want to get news through the Vermont, just send the news release to the weekly newspapers. They print almost anything. <laughs> so I have gotten a lot. These pictures came because I sent the Bellows Falls newspaper or the Brattleboro paper, and they saw I'm looking for information. This lady sent me pictures like this. <clears throat> and it turns out that the lady who owns the Bellows Falls camp is the state representative. So I called her up and I said, did you know this is the 90th anniversary? So guess what she got? Proclamation celebrating April 5th. And then I wanted the a governor to do it. Do you know what you have to do? You have to write it yourself. <laughs> so you write it and then give it to the governor and then they'll sign it. <laughs> 
But I think the, <laughs> I'll pass those around. So that was neat. That was, I couldn't, I did get something in Connecticut. They only give a sentence for the legislature. But the governor never came through for me. Uh, so you'd have four barracks. The, might have been the clinic. Do you see the truck garages? All the trucks were kept in a garage. The, see where the chimney is? That was the mess hall. Or no, no. Oh, sorry. That's the rec hall. Mess hall is in front of it. And right up here, Route 91. How many have been to Elmore, Lake Elmore? Nice with the northern part of above Waterbury. Okay. See that summer of 33, just like uh, your picture of your grandfather? They lived, great grandfather, whoa. Uh, they lived in tents, Army World War I tents. They had to quickly, and then while they were, when they figured out what the projects were, uh, they would hire carpenters to build buildings for them. So by the winter time of 33, that they had some place to uh, sheltered from the storm. They got up at six. Look at how neatly everything was organized. Uh, everything organized there. And then look at, they'd have the roll call in the morning and then eight o'clock. And then when they came back, the lowering of the flag, every truck was in a garage. Look at the North Field. Anybody go to North Field? Do you know where the fairgrounds are? That's where the camp was. Isn't that amazing? So there's all these, sometimes, like that uh, Bellows Falls, I think they rented the land. And sometimes the camps were on state land, like up by you in uh, Scutney. Here is the Weston camp. They rented this farmland. Uh, St. Albans, I'm going to go up and give a talk there to see what they did. Uh, they built a lot of roads. Uh, they had a cleat track tractor. Did you ever hear, see or hear of those? Uh, building roads and the dam. They worked eight hours, an hour off for lunch. Look at the bridge. Look at this, unbelievable. And if you've been to Townsend State Park, anybody ever go there, Townsend? Okay, the Bellows Falls boys that were, the camp was in, they called it the Bellows Falls camp because that was the nearest post office and railroad. But it was in Westminster, okay? And so they, the Bellows Falls camp went there and built Townsend. They also built Grafton Park and Dummerston. Anybody ever go to Dummerston? Who was the famous writer in Dummerston? Rudyard Kipling. Did you believe the Jungle Book was written in Vermont? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay, then they went, and it was family style. You could have as much as you want. So these boys, working really hard, they gained muscle. Then they went back to their locker, or lockers uh, and talked, you know. Look at how nice and neat. Sometimes they had dogs, too, for pets. Then they would go to the rec hall if they wanted to, and they just had this pressed cardboard, homosote. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Uh, that was the only insulation they had. But they had ping pong, pool tables. What a, doesn't that look like a resort? <laughs> and then the boys would bring their instruments. They would have bands and play it. There on maybe Friday night or Saturday going on to town. And all they had was tar paper on the roof and on the sides. It was just temporary, you know? But imagine how cold it was in there in the winter time. You know, when it's below zero. Hey, here's the Escutney camp. I do have some pictures, which I'll show you. There, it, looks, it looks like they're dressed up. Maybe they'd go into a truck and go into town. See those nice girls down here in Escutney. And wait, somebody had a neighbor. Catherine, tell them that story. Do you remember much of a story? Uh, Charmaine Eckert, uh, some of you long time people probably know her, but she, uh, 
she was Charlene now, now she's the protector of her father. John the protector, he came from Quincy to work at the CC. Quincy, New Massachusetts. And he married a girl from Claremont, and he moved to Windsor. Mm -hmm. He had a friend, Red Bulemeyer, who also married somebody up here and lived in Windsor. Neat, thank you. So, boxing was really popular. They would get money that they made in the uh, canteen and buy uniforms, play other CCC camps. Look at these veterans skiing, you know, at uh, Barry. And in the winter, they'd have to see if they could find a gym to play in, uh, either a grange or a church or the, the uh, high school. Uh, some boys had to learn how to cook and cook for 200. Uh, on Sundays, if they wanted to go to church, the boys, a truck would take them, or if an army chaplain might come. Uh, then they realized these boys are only eighth grade education, a lot of them, so let's teach them. So they hired a teacher, somebody who had graduated from college, maybe wasn't even a professional teacher, teach them, uh, get somebody arts and crafts cooking. Some of these camps had their own dark room. Uh, look at these veterans at the Waterbury Dam taking classes at night. Uh, and look at this in the Danby camp. See, it was the Danby camp, but guess what town it was in? Mount Tremper. And those Mount Tremper people are so mad. I stayed at one house. They said, Marty, you've got to change that when you write the chapter. You can't put down Danby Camp. It was Mount Tremper. I said, I can't do it, because that's what the Army called it. <laughs> uh, he had to teach these boys how to drive trucks. Look at each camp had about 15 trucks, dump trucks and in uh, stake body trucks. Uh, and they would have benches on the side. And each truck, boys, all they did were drive trucks. They didn't do any planting of trees or anything. Just drive, drive boys and make sure the trucks were in order. They had their own camp newspapers. Now, Coolidge, I've got to go to that, that park. I don't think, I think that's one I missed. And the lady who donated me this trunk, her dad was from Massachusetts. You'll be able to come up and see. Look at all the places he traveled. And one of the camps was a Scutney. And in the trunk, were these camp newspapers. They would come out monthly. And who found somebody in, did you find, Catherine? Charlene's dad. Charlene's dad is in the news, one of the newspapers. Monthly newspapers. So I'll pass these around, just be very gentle. And you could read, just see what the funny things, even advertisements. Get this one. And I, and we'll pass just, you know, what I apropos, huh, to be in Windsor and pass out monthly, monthly, every time. And these were the, if I started teaching in the 65, and the old mimeograph machines with the black ink, and you'd have, yeah, and, and it would make tears in it. I don't even know how we patched mistakes. Yeah, but look at how many, how many pictures, how many we have. Everybody could read, and then read through, and then we'll. You could tell, tell me some some astounding thing. I'll come back after your friend retreat. <laughs> okay, what did these boys accomplish? Look at in Vermont. Fire breaks, thirty miles, hazard reduction, and all this stuff will be in the book. Timber estimating, work on streams. Uh, national accomplishments, hundreds, thousand million, one billion, over a billion trees were planted. They fought insects like Dutch elm disease, gypsy moths, and we can't say gypsy moths anymore. Spongy, what are they called? Spongy caterpillars? 
because we don't want to offend the gypsies. Okay. <clears throat> How many have, have some white pine trees near their place? Anybody? Now, one thing you don't want to have currant bushes or gooseberries within uh, 90 feet of the, 100 feet of it, because they are the host of a fungus that when the wind blows goes up into the trees and kills the white pine trees. So the CCC boys, in the springtime right now, they would be searching for currant bushes, ripping them up and letting them dry out. They tried to stop the caterpillars, okay, gypsy moths, and they would see these egg masses. There would be millions of eggs in them, like almost like little cigars. The boys climbed up trees searching for them, and they would paint them with creosote, which is cancer-causing, we finally found out. There they were. They had also banned the trees with burlap, so when the caterpillars came down to get shelter, they would squish them. Now, you old folks, do you remember squishing caterpillars? The guts coming out? Green slime. Okay. Fire protection. <clears throat> Now, I found out in other states they built uh, water holes, but I was told here in Vermont they didn't make water holes because they said water's all over the place, you know, when there's a fire, to, to fight a fire. Uh, but this time of the year, they would have about six weeks, they'd have ten boys. They never left the camp. They were ready doing jobs around the camp, but they had their uh, firefighting equipment, the Indian tanks and the uh, brooms, and they would put out fires right at, at its beginning. Look at they built fire towers. Oh, a Scutney fire tower. Huh? Uh, truck trails. There's a road that goes, anybody go on the road from Danby, Mount Tremper, all the way to Peru? They built that road. There. And look at the building. Maybe you can't see it too well, the stonework. But a lady up there in Barry, she said, my, my father was the mason who guided the boys building this. And she's got his diary. Oh, wow. Day by day working on this project. Even in December, snow on the ground, and her grandfather or father was working on this. And it's got like an alcove in there with a fireplace where they, people could give talks mm -hmm. and a bathroom. The same building is at the Grafton Park, but it's in the woods. People don't even know about it. It's smashed. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, Ricker Pond, you have shelters. Look at Base Lodge, uh, the Notch, uh, the road going from Shrewsbury all the way to Plymouth they built. I, this is uh, up there in... Groton State Park, Calvin Coolidge State Forest, ski shelter. Uh, they took the uh, wood out and uh, from the forest and made lumber. And look at 36 flood. They were called in. Call the boys in. Help us clean up from the cellars. The trees, they had to, and this was just two-man saws and axes you know, uh, the work. Uh, the greatest, greatest uh, sal uh, they just love nature. They, the one thing the boys told me, we learn to get along with each other. So the, oh, I've got to go, I'll show you. I've got about 33, 34 sites where there were camps. So my job, that's, I'm going to be up in Bethel, all it was there for six months, right along the river there. What river? The White River? The White River. There's a fish hatchery there. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Did it? Yeah. Barry City. Okay, I'm going to be up there. Uh, here's the Bethel. The camp is there. They said there's chimney left. So the guy at the fish hatchery says, Marty... You just take this road, you know, it's growing in. So I'm walking down this road, and they said, you go down, the road forks to the uh, right and left, turn to the right, and as I was going, I looked in, 
I can't see it, but there was a black head out of the grass. So I figured, I better get out of there. I'm not going to see the campsite. So I quickly turned around. In a little while, I ran like crazy because I didn't want to get eaten by a bear. Uh, Ludlow, they built the trail all the way up to the top. And it was on farmland. How many have skied at, at uh, Okimo? You know where the lodge is? To the left is a parking lot. That's where the camp was. I had this 93-year-old guy. <laughs> he says, I know where it was. So I got to find that one. Oh, so did, did, they build, did they build the road that goes up the top? The whole road to the top. Get out of your way. Uh, they also put up the fire tower. There's the boys. They learn for, uh, um, surveying. I got it. Now the Windsor. This is where we are. What did they do? Located back mountain road. Tiny hollow block. Contained. Okay. Summit road. Stone toilet building. Campsites 1 through 18. Two large picnic shelters. Stone pavilion, four stone water fountains. I don't know if they're still there. Nope, gone. Uh, forest, Forester's stone house, you know, at the beginning. I went in the basement. And the guy said on the beams, the names of the guys, CCC boys. <laughs> so if you ever <laughs> want to go into the basement, uh, that's what I learned there. Uh, Forester stone house, two camping loops. 19 lean-tos, that is, and some of them have gorgeous views, you know, of the valley, the mountains. Seven of the tent sites are historic, originally contained wooden tent platforms. Three log veneer bathhouses, uh, hiking trails, playground, picnic, parking areas, two firewood shelters. You ever see these things that are like this, this, and they have firewood in them, stone on the side? Okay, whoops, sorry. What else am I doing here? Well and pump house, stone, right? Fireplaces at each campsite, maybe stone and mortar, stone culverts. Four of the campsite buildings are still standing, are used as maintenance. Now, where was the camp? You know where the ranger's house is? There's a road to the left and up in there, that's where the camp was, right near, close to that uh, but, and these are some of the pictures. There's the boys maybe in the morning getting ready to work. Look at their nice boots and clothes. There they are taking a break, working in the winter, chopping wood, building the road going up there. And everything had to be perfect according to federal ways of building the roads. Okay? And you ever see those culverts, those wooden culverts or stone culverts? Still there from the 30s. Look at the guys, the muscles. Look at the kitchen patrol, KP duty. There's the tent camp, 1933. And look at them lining up. And that, look at the cook shelter. Okay, uh, began in January, February, March, April, May. June, right? No, July. July 19, 33, and ended in 38. They went then to work in Okimo, that company. Now, the boys signed up for six months. They could sign up for another six months. Another six months, up to two years, then they had to leave. Unless they were really good, you know, mess sergeant or something like that, they kept them as a leader. Okay. Look at this one. That beautiful building at the Wilgus. Did you ever see how gorgeous that is? Man. And what they did there, that stone rangers quarters, seven stone water fountains, picnic shelters, comfort station, picnic tables, 12 stone fireplaces, parking area, hiking trail to the pinnacle. Look at the sports. They were skiing already there. There, they're pet. 
There are the trails that they made. And look at the ski trail, cutting the uh, trees down. You know, by this uh, Killington. How many have been up there? It was a Girl Scout camp. Did anybody go to that camp? Menden. Okay. And they put like a trail there. After the camp closed, there was a uh, girls' camp. Now it's just everything is abandoned. Grace Congregational Church of Rutland. Somebody is from Rutland here. Who said they were from Rutland? Family was from Rutland. My dad. That's what it was. I knew there was a Rutland person here. But this, it's unbelievable. Now they made the trails that you could walk through and see where the chimneys were, etc. How many have been to Shrewsbury? From Shrewsbury all the way to Plymouth. Look at, the, look at that snowfall. <whistles> they built that road. And the camp was where the elementary school is now. If you don't know anybody about uh, there. They even made a ski mountain. But then it was too hard to get to in the winter, so that never made it. There's the camp in the winter. Working. And that, beautiful. People weren't going there much. The state just let it, or I don't even know if they burned it, or plus vandalism because it was way out in the sticks. The only thing left is this water. Uh, look at gorgeous. That's where the mountain school is, Proctorville. Ooh. I walked in the woods. Oh, my God, this was something. I, the forester took me. You could see the foundations left in the woods. Look at this. If you travel on this dirt road, you'd never know that this stuff was right along the side of a mountain. Look at this. Look at the size of those stones. Who was that guy that took me? Uh, Tim Morton. Anybody know him? Okay. Oh, boy. We're, okay, three minutes. We've got to get out of here. Okay, Plymouth. I got to, they did a lot of work there. I, I got to find out. Oh, they, the Plymouth side camp came up and did the Escutney one. Tower. Okay. Did you know Ripton? Who was the famous writer that lived in Ripton? Robert Frost. Robert Frost. 35. They built this camp. Guess what? Never was used. Congress never appropriated money to have the camp there. So it was just abandoned. That's it. <laughs> Rochester. I gave a talk there. And now you're in the National Forest. So all their records and everything, trying to find their records, because the Rutland office was closed and everything is in storage. Okay. That's all I have. Sharon. Anybody go to Sharon? They had a camp there. Look at this. The pillars are still there. And 4-H camp, downer. Anybody go there? Yeah. Hey, really, two alumni. You were right in a CCC camp. Look at the dining room. That was the mess hall. And a couple buildings still left. Stone buildings. Girls remember that? Up on the hill above the camp? And then you go further. Look at these chimneys. The pond? Did you go swimming there? No? No. Then the, you people are from Dartmouth, a few people working there, etc. association. Now, this, when that camp was closed, there was a professor uh, at Dartmouth, U Eugene Rosenstock Hussey, okay? He came from Germany, and his idea was what philosopher William James, the moral equivalent of war, and that means if we spent as much money on wars, like the Ukrainian war, and stopped doing that, wars, and we just spent the money on doing things for people. This was, they tried to do that at Sharon. 
okay? And they called it Camp William James. They even had uh, Eleanor Roosevelt coming to try to convince her husband that we could have not only poor boys, but boys from Dartmouth, okay, rich. And they would go and help the community. This was the beginning of, later on, the Peace Corps. But it was not finally accepted by the government. But if you want to read a, a good book, this guy, Jack Press, who was in this Camp William James, they tried it, I think it lasted about a month. And they went Tunbridge, they worked and helped with the farmers, lived with them, they didn't ask for money, just room and board. But that guy just passed away. He was a professor down south, but he wrote this book. <coughs> and we have one minute. But think, I'm going to go through these. These are the veterans. But look at these camps. Each 200 guys, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 just building this dam uh, by above Montpelier. Then Middlesex, there was one there. And they did work around the river, the veterans camp. One guy in, my, in the audience in uh, Tetford, he said, my rock band played there. <laughs> Anybody? They have a bakery? Montpelier, the Bailey Dam. And also they had a dam. Oh, look at this. Look at the Wrightsville Dam. Putting rocks, the face of the dam. You know, it was an earthen dam. That's what it is. Now it holds back the water so we don't have flooding. Look at how bad the dam, uh, the, the flooding were. This is the Waterbury Dam. This is what it looked like, the little river. There was a sawmill there. Look what happened. Now they had machinery. They had 2,600 Army veterans in these places, in the above. Here's the dam over here. And on the hill, they had their own sewer, fire department, movie theater, store, hockey rink. And you see, they're like yous. Mm -hmm. They were a hundred veterans in each barracks. A hundred. And they worked on this dam. Now they had some machinery. Look at the site. I mean, you go there, and there's a campsite too. You could go camping above it. Hockey, they had a ski area. Look at their movie theater. <laughs> Uh, store, there's an aerial view. Roosevelt came, that's what it looks like today. They have a walking, uh, you could walk around. World War II came, we no longer needed the boys in the woods. We needed them to fight, never officially closed. You go, how many been to Denver in the distance? They used to have Easter ceremonies between these two big red rocks. Please. CCC, come and build us a theater. Well, they built a theater for 10,000. You were there? No, our son does the concerts there. They have outdoor concerts. So. Unbelievable. 10,000. I saw the Steve Miller Band and a British singer. God, under the stars, 10,000. So if you ever get the tickets now, forget about it. Uh, how many have been to Virginia? Uh, the um, Skyline Drive. This, look, there's the Townsend one. You can see a little bit better picture. Now, if you want to see a CCC museum, this was founded by the boys. Uh, all of New England came, and they donated stuff. And it's caught in Stafford Springs, and just this building is left, and it's open. Uh, every Sunday, 12 to 3. Past two years, I had volunteers coming and helping. Anybody wants to volunteer? Where's Stafford Springs? It's it's above Putnam. Or no, it's west of Putnam. It is not too far from the Massachusetts border, and it's on Route 190. 190. So these are my books. Anybody would like a book? I've got 11 books, but I, they don't sell too well in Vermont. But sometimes they buy the Connecticut because they're from Connecticut or I love Rhode Island. Oh, anybody go to Rhode Island? This, so thank you so much for coming. I forgot to show you a license plate.
Uh, some guy I bartered with them uh, for one of the trucks. I think I sent most of the stuff out to you. Yeah. 